When you claim a peg, it's yours. No one else can fish from the same peg as long as your gear is in it. Bear in mind though, if you walk too far away and leave your peg unattended, we'll remove your equipment and allow someone else to claim it. Okay, it's time to talk about your fishing tackle. Your rig and bait are just two of the tools in your arsenal to catch fish. Choosing the right rig and bait combination is essential to catching carp. When you're holding a rod, you can change your rig and bait by simply opening your inventory and choosing new ones. We'll explain how different setups work in another lesson. For now, just change your rig and bait to whatever you like the sound of. Close your inventory when you're happy with the tackle options you've chosen. Right, you've claimed your peg and you've got your end tackle set up. Next, I'm going to talk you through how you cast in dovetail games fishing. Start off by walking up to the front of the peg. When you're near the edge of the water, you should be able to open the bail arm, hold the line and get into a casting position. With the line held, you want to pull the rod back until the lead is behind you. But remember, keep the line held or the bait will drop. <laughs> now with the lead behind you and your arms straight, push the rod forward. This is the action you'll need to master when performing a long range cast. So have a practice swing to get used to the motion. <laughs> Now you've had a bit of practice, let's try a proper cast. Again, pull the rod back until the lead is behind you. Now this time, when you push the rod forward, you want to release the line at the right time to get a decent cast. Have a go and see if you can cast over 15 meters. If you don't hit 15 meters on your first go, reel in and try again. You can gauge the bed type by feeling the vibration through the rod when the bait hits the lake bed. Knowing what you're fishing over is essential. You'll want to use rigs and baits that are better suited to the particular bed type. Unfortunately, the fish aren't biting at the moment, so let's reel it in and call it a day. Welcome back for another lesson. I know you want to get on with things and catch big fish, but everyone has to start somewhere. And trust me, when you're on the bank with a fish on, you'll thank me for this. Grab your rod and Just like before, head for a peg and unload your gear. Now let's talk watercraft. Take a minute and have a look at where you're fishing from. You can see there's a decent margin on the opposite side of the lake with some overhanging trees and some reeds. An ideal place for a carp to hang out. Almost anyone can cast a rod out and wait for the occasional fish, but it requires skill and technique to catch big fish consistently. That's where watercraft comes into play. One element of watercraft is looking for the visual cues. Keep an eye out for splashing, shows and small feeding bubbles. These all indicate that there are fish in the area and this is where you need to be targeting. Now it looks like there's a lot of weed over there. That'll make things harder. Weed is a fish's dream and an angler's nightmare. If you're using a bottom bait and you cast into weed, your bait will be hidden and the fish won't find it easily. It can also tangle your line and help the fish escape your hook. So. When fishing over a weed bed, try using something that sits above it. A chod rig would do the job. Don't worry if you don't have one, you can just use mine for now. But I want it back at the end of the lesson. When you're ready, cast out to the weeds on the far bank. Don't worry if you don't hit them first time, just reel in and try again. Although try not to do that too often or you might spook the fish. Result! I'm going to get a bit technical with you now, so pay attention. Your line is attached to a reel on your rod, and all reels are fitted with an adjustable drag system. The drag system is what sets how much resistance there is for the fish to pull line out from the reel. 
so if you set it to its lowest setting, the fish will pull the line out easily and swim further away. But if you set the drag system to its maximum, the fish won't be able to pull line from the reel at all. It's locked up and the fish is going nowhere. Let's put that into practice. Try increasing the drag on the reel to 90%. Okay, if you had a fish on, it would find it difficult to pull line out from your reel. Bear in mind though, when you have your drag set this high, you're adding more tension to the line, and that could lead to losing the fish. To monitor your tension, take a look at your drag system. When you have a fish on, you'll be able to see how much tension there is on the line by checking the tension gauge. Blue shows you when the tension is low, and red shows you when the tension is high. The two indicators at each end are there to show you when you're in real danger of losing the fish. You don't want to be in here, so adjust your tensions accordingly to get out of the danger zone. With that in mind, let's lower your drag to something a little easier on the fish. Something like 30%. When the drag is set this low, the fish will be allowed to take the line with a little bit of resistance, but it shouldn't be enough to lose the fish. The trade-off with setting the drag too low is that the fish can easily take the line and head for things that could snag it. You really want to keep the fish away from reeds on the bank and weed beds. If the f Now if you're lucky enough to have a fish on and you're reading it in, my advice is to keep an eye on the fish's movements and what's around it. Constantly check the tension to make sure you have enough to reel in the fish, but not too much that it escapes. Think you're ready to take on a fish? You've got a bite. Time to see if you've been paying attention. Start off by reeling in to tighten the line and help set the hook, but keep an eye on the tension. If you lose this fish, you'll owe me a new chod rig. Now stop reeling for a second. You don't want to add too much tension to the line. You can pull the fish in by literally pulling the rod back and then reeling in the slack line. Try it, pull the rod back over your head. See the tension on the rod? Now move the rod forward and reel in the slack line. Careful now. When there's too little tension on the line, there's a chance of the fish escaping by throwing the hook. But when there's too much tension, well, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen. New chod rig for me. Let's get this fish close to the bank so we can net it. You can move the rod to the side if you want to pull the fish in a certain direction. That's your tactic for pulling fish away from weed beds and guiding the fish. Quality stuff. You're almost ready to net this fish. Just reel it in a little closer. Don't forget to pull the rod back and reel in the slack line to bring the fish in properly. Here we go. Make or break time. It's time to net the fish. Start off by picking up the net. Now keep your rod steady and guide the net towards the fish. Check it out. You've caught yourself a beautiful common... 